Hello, welcome. Let's try to solve another lead code problem, 254 factor combinations. So we are giving a number n, and uh, yeah, so the numbers can be regarded as the product of their factors. So for example, this 8, 8 is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 or 2 times 4. And we are giving this number n. And let's check the number. It is more than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 10 to the power of 7. And we're going to return all possible combinations of its factors. So we can return the answers in any order. Yeah, but definitely it's going to be like 2 to 3. It's going to only have 1. Maybe you can find another one, maybe uh, like 3 to 2, but it's going to be the same. We just need to return only 1, 2 to 3. Yeah. Um, the factors yeah, should be 2 to n minus 1. So this means 1 is not okay. We will not find 1. Uh, so this is a mathematic problem, but uh, we need to use some uh, algorithm to solve the problem. Yeah, we need to find all the combinations. Maybe we can find 2 and 6 or 3 and 4, but how can we find all of them, like 2, 2 and 3? So if we were to find all the combinations, basically this is going to be a backtracking problem. Yeah, because backtracking, if we find a, a sub-problem, we're going to put it inside of the result, and then we continue to find the sub-problem. Yeah, because from the beginning, for example, if we are giving a number 12, we start to find the sub-problem. So what could be the sub-problem? Because we are going to start from 2, so we're going to start from 2. So if we find a 2, we're going to put a 2 inside of a result. And then we have a 6. And this 2 times 6 is 12. We're going to put a 6 inside of the result. Yeah. Now we're going to split it again. And here it's going to be 2 and 3. Yeah. So from here, we will not stop. So we're going to continue from this 6. Yeah. Because we still need to find all others. Yeah. So the other result may be uh, 2, 2, and 3. Yeah, so this is another result. But this is two only, is only one possible case. So what about we try to check others? So for example, for this 12, we can still check others, maybe 3 and uh, 4. We can check two others. So we're going to put 3 and 4 inside of the result. Yeah, maybe this 4 can still split to, to 2 and 2. But as I explained, 3, 2, 2, and 2, 2, 3 is a duplicate. So we will avoid that. Maybe this is only the difficult part. We should try to avoid 2 to 3 or 3 to 2. Yeah. So uh, now let's go back to the backtracking to uh, solve the problem. Yeah. So we're going to define a um, backtrack function. Inside, um, I'm going to have these numbers. And uh, I'm also prepare an answer array. So I'm going to prepare a result array. And I will call the backtracking. It's going to be the number of this n and it's going to be an empty array. So after that, I'm going to return the result. So now let's design the backtracking. So what about uh, this n? So what this n can be? Yeah, so I think this is a little bit difficult normally. Normally, this n can be uh, 0 or 1 or something, but it is not like that, because we need to find all the combinations. So we need to check the answers. Definitely, the answers uh, combined with n is one of the results, but we need to find all the possible cases. So we're going to check the answers, yeah? Because the result should be at least two numbers. It, it cannot be only one number. For example, 12. With only 12, it is not possible. It has to be 2 and 6. So we're going to check the answers. If the length of the answers is more than 0, yeah, it means it is not empty. Or we can directly use the if uh, answers. It means, uh, yeah, there must be something inside of the answers array. If it is not empty, so we're going to put it inside of a result. So the result would be the answers plus with this number n. So this will be a possible case. Because inside of the answers, for example, the numbers can be for this 12, the numbers can be uh, 2. And then this n would be 6. So 2 plus 6 is one of the possible results. Yeah. So normally, while we are solving the backtracking problem, we're going to have a return. But for other problem, we don't need it, because this 6 can still be separated into 2 and 3. So we will not return anything. We will continue the backtracking. Yeah. Now we're going to control the for loop. So for i in range, for the factors, it's going to be yeah, starting from 2. 
and then we're gonna use the integer of square uh, uh, square root of this number n plus one. Yeah, we're gonna check all possible cases, and we're gonna use the backtracking basically. Uh, so the backtracking would be uh, let me try let me check. It's gonna be n uh, divided by i. Yeah, if n was to divided by i, so we have to check the if condition is that if n modular i uh, equal to zero. Now we can start the backtracking. So it's gonna be n divided by i. We're gonna get an integer, and then the answer would plus. Uh, let me check. Mm. Yeah, the answer would plus with this uh, uh, integer i. Now it seems the backtracking is okay. There's not so much coding. But there's gonna be a duplicate, as I explained earlier. We're gonna have like two two three or three two two. Let's just check that. So let's check the result for testing case one and three. It is okay because it is empty. But for testing case two, as you can see, the duplicate. So there is two two three and three two two. So we should avoid such kind of duplicate in backtracking. Normally we can control it from the backtracking function. Yeah. So we can control it from the if condition, or we can control it from the backtracking directly. So I think from the backtracking directly, it's gonna be easier. Yeah, so we only need to use uh, use an if tag to, yeah, to get the possible result. So we need to only get two to three, but not three to two. How can we do that? Um, yeah, so we're gonna do an if tag. So if uh, uh, not answer, this means the answer array is empty, so it is okay, we're gonna start the backtracking, it is okay. Or, um, this number i is more than or equal to answers minus 1. It means uh, the result would always be in increasing order. If it is always in increasing order, there's gonna not be duplicate, so it will not have this testing case, because all the result would be in increasing order. Yeah, like two, two, three, three, four, and two, six. Now, uh, we are not only doing the trimming for the backtracking, but also we did the uh, did the right testing cases. Uh, we did the right result. So if we meet the conditions, we're gonna start the backtracking. Yeah. So in this way, we're gonna avoid the uh, three, two, two because we have uh, if tag, so the i would always be more than equal to the last number inside the answers array. Uh, now let me run it to tag. As you can see, it works. Now let me submit it to tag if it can pass all the testing cases. Yeah, as you can see, it passed all the testing cases, and it seems a hard problem, but while we are using backtracking, it becomes really easy, so the problem becomes easier by using the backtracking if we are familiar about backtracking. Yeah. Now let's analyze the time complexity. So for this problem, n is 10 to the power of 7, and here we use a square root. So for this for loop, it is the square root of n, but we need to check all those uh, modular i, and this i would be minimum of 2. So the time complexity uh, would be uh, sqrt square root of n uh, times uh, the log of n, so this is gonna be the time complexity, and the space complexity. Yeah, let me. So the space complexity would be uh, log n. Yeah, because um, uh, for the backtracking, basically we're gonna check the depth of the tree. So the depth of the tree is always uh, um, determined by this i, and this i is gonna be minimum two. So it is the log two gonna be the depth of the tree. So it's gonna be the space and the time gonna be square root of n times log n. So this is a not a usual time complexity, but uh, yeah, it is also uh, possible to analyze because it is just a for loop with an if tag and it's basically a square root of n times log n for the time. Thank you for watching. See you next time.